bit of a bug. I'm sorry. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Lord. David, though, was a praiser. Yes, he was taking care of the sheep. He was a son as a young boy to take care of the sheep. Uh -huh. And he wouldn't let anything happen to the sheep. If there was a bear that came or a lion that came, he pursued after the enemy and yes. took back the one that the devil had stolen. Yes. Took back the one that the enemy had stolen. Yes. And so he was not only a keeper of the sheep, but, because, but he became a shepherd of the people. Amen. Thank you, Lord. Amen. He's, thank you, Lord. Amen. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Lord God. Mighty, mighty God. And God watched him. Thank you, Lord. God watched him as he cared for the sheep. And he saw in him a heart like himself. A heart that loved the sheep. A heart that wouldn't give up. That wouldn't leave them to themselves. Thank you, Lord. Just like the fivefold ministry. A heart of a pastor that wouldn't leave them when they needed him. Thank you, Lord. The sheep are not so smart. Thank you, Jesus. They're Amen. not so smart and they go, they sometimes will go off to themselves, Sister Rachel. Yeah. Thank you, Lord. Amen. You know, they're supposed to stay in the flock to stay safe. Amen. And so David tried to protect them. He said he's broad in his staff. Thank you, Lord. He used that in the 23rd Psalms, how they comforted him because God, if he would stray too far, God would pull him back. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Lord. And he learned so much from taking care of the sheep. While he was out there, he was praying and he was seeking God, even as a little boy, maybe I think it's 10 to 15 years old, was a source that I read that he stayed and he and he took care of them. And so when Saul was rejected from being king, the people wanted a king. And and the Lord gave them Saul against him. You know, he didn't want him to have a king. He wanted them to trust him. Yes, he wanted yes. them to come directly to him. Amen. Yes, Amen. Asked for a king. Thank you, Lord. And he gave on Saul. And Saul was a big man, taller, so much taller and so much, so handsome. And as somebody that, to the natural eye, he looked like a great king, didn't he? Thank you, Jesus. Come on. But God said, don't look at the outside. Yes. Don't look at the outside of a person. Don't look at their stature. You know, don't look at what kind of body they're housed in, what color or what gender or whatever. Don't look at that. Look at the anointing. Look at the heart on the inside of that yeah, person. Thank you, Lord. A heart for the sheep. A heart, thank you, Lord, that they won't leave it in times of trouble. And then he told yeah. Samuel, he said, go and anoint him, King. And, and he said, I'll tell you which son to choose. So he went to the house of Jesse, didn't he? And he, he took seven sons in front of him, and the Lord rejected them all. They said, yeah. surely this tall man, surely this big man, thank you, Lord, is the one that God wants. And he said, God said no to all of them. He said, do you have no more sons? Thank you, Jesus. He said, there's one more that's out taking care of the sheep. There's one more that's not leaving the sheep. There's pastors that won't leave the sheep. There's evangelists, there's teachers that don't leave the sheep. Thank the Lord that take care of them. And he said, go get me that one. And when he came, God said, that's the one. That's the one that I want. The one that's, that's after my heart. The one that loves the sheep, that loves the people, that has a heart for the people. Yes. Thank you, Jesus. And Samuel took oil and he anointed him. And from the time that he anointed him, the spirit of the Lord was with David. Yes. Thank you, Jesus. And for years, it took years for that to go, you know, to go anywhere. He went back to taking care of the sheep. He had time that he spent with Saul trying to sue that wicked spirit that Saul had, yeah. that Saul was rejected of God for disobedience. You know, we have to obey God. Yeah. He said obedience is better than sacrifice. And Saul tried to offer up sacrifices when it wasn't his place. You know, in the Old Testament, it talks about people offering up strange fire yeah. unto God. God. God won't just receive anything. Amen. Thank you, Amen. Jesus. Amen. He won't receive just anything. Amen. Thank you, Lord. The sacrifices of praise. He wants a people that worship him. Yes. You know, our sacrifices now is not the bulls and goats, but it's the, it's the praise.
praises of our lips yes. and our worship that we have for him. Those are the sacrifices. Yes. But still, he wants an obedient people. Amen. The yes. people that will do whatever he gives them to do. Amen. Thank you, thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Lord. I'm going to read some in Acts 13. If you guys want to go to there. Thank you, Lord. Got to have these glasses. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah. Mighty God. Mighty God. Thank you, Lord. Hallelujah. In the New Testament, when Paul started reminding the people of the past, this is starting in verse 16. It said, And Paul stood up and beckoning with his hand said, Men of Israel, ye that fear God, give audience. The God of this people of Israel chose our fathers and exalted the people when they dwelt as strangers in the land of Egypt and with a high arm brought them out. He brought us out. Thank you, Lord. He brought us out of sin. He brought us out of death. Thank you, Lord. Yes. Thank you, Jesus. He gave us a new life. Thank you, Lord. And about the time of 40 years suffered he their manners in the wilderness. God gave them time, didn't he? Thank he you, did. Jesus. The people were disobedient. The people were rebellious. But God worked with them just like he works with us. Amen. He gives us time. That's why we've got to be careful about his jewels. We have to be careful about the children, the, the babies that come into God. You know, sometimes we say, you know, you've been in it long, long enough that you know better than things that you do. But you got to realize everybody doesn't grow with the same. And it's not up to us. Amen. Thank you, Lord. It's Come not on. up to us. It's God. It's God that chooses. It's God that raises up. It's God that puts down. Thank you, Jesus. Yes. Thank you, Lord. He said in the end, he said, I'll do the separating. Let them grow up together. Yeah. Thank you, Jesus. Yeah. And in the end, I'll do the separating. Yes. So take care that you don't pluck up one of his little ones. Yes. Thank, Thank you, Lord. Thank That's you, Jesus. Right. Thank you, Lord. <coughs> Thank you, Lord Jesus. Thank you, Lord Jesus. And when he had destroyed seven nations, in the land of Canaan, he divided their land to them by lot. And after he gave unto them judges about the space of 450 years until Samuel the prophet. And afterward they desired a king. And God gave them Saul, the son of Sis, a man of the tribe of Benjamin, the space of 40 years. And when they, when they removed him, he raised up unto them David to be their king. To whom he also gave testimony and said, I have found David, the son of Jesse, a man after my own heart. What a testimony. Thank you, Jesus, that shall fulfill all of my will. And this man's seed hath God, according to his promise, raised in, unto Israel a Savior, Jesus, from his lineage. Thank you, Lord. Think about who was his ancestors. His great grandparents yes. was was Ruth and Boaz. Yes. He was member David. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Jesus. So he came. He was like my little great grandkids, McKenna and Adeline. The, the impact that I have on to them. Look at what they must have passed on to to David. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. So David, thank you, Lord, at one time met with Goliath and his giant. Have you ever met with a giant, Sister Lo? Have you ever had to do battle with a giant? Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Jesus. That people try to tell you that you can't make it, you can't defeat it. It'll take you down. Thank you. If the people around you don't tell you, the devil talking to your mind will tell you. Yeah. Thank you, Jesus. Well, David stood up and said, Who is this uncircumcised Philistine? Amen. <laughs> he would defy the army of God. Saul asked him, wanting to know his credentials, and he said that he, had, he slew a lion and a bear, and he took back the sheep out of its mouth. He cared for the sheep always. Thank you, Lord. But this little boy, 
with not big, maybe 10, 15 years old, able to do battle with a lion and do battle with a bear and come out victorious. He came out victorious because he went in the name of the Lord. Yes. Thank you, Jesus. Amen. Thank you, Lord. And he said, you come at me with a sling and a sword, but I come to you in the name of the Lord. Thank you, Jesus. The Lord is a warrior. Thank you, Jesus. The, he called his name Jehovah, Jehovah Saba. Which means the Lord is a warrior. Yes, thank you, Jesus. And he and he robed David in righteousness. He robed David in his power, in his authority. Thank you. So whatever David put his hand to do, anointed by God, God did it. Yes. Thank you, Jesus. Yes. What a mighty God. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Jesus. Yes, Lord. Bless you, Jesus. Bless you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. And they tried to put, Saul tried to put his armor on David. He didn't want him to go out without armor, but he tried to put armor of the flesh on him. Uh -huh. Armor that had to be proven. Armor that was too much of a weight for him to carry. We can't carry all this weight, Sister Rachel. We can't carry all the things that, that the world tries to put on us. It's too much for us. Thank you, Jesus. So David shook it off, and he said, you come to me with the sling and the sword and the javelin, but I come to you in the name of the Lord. His strength was in God. Wasn't it? Yes. His Amen. heart was in God. Hallelujah. And he went unafraid. Yes. Thank Lord. you, Lord. And, and used the weapons that God gave him to use. Yes. And the, the enemy was defeated. Amen. If we hold to God and we use the weapons that we have, the weapons of our warfare are not carnal, right. but they're mighty through the pulling down of strongholds. Yes. Thank you, Jesus. We don't fight in our flesh. Thank you, Lord. It's not our job. It's not our job to take vengeance. It's not our job to fight this warfare yes. as a warfare of flesh. Thank you, Lord, because that's not our weapon. Our weapon is the Word of God. Amen. Our weapon is prayer. Our weapon is fasting. Our weapon is standing. When you've done all to stand, he said, stand, therefore. Yeah. Thank you, Jesus. Yeah. Stand, stand, and don't be afraid. Thank you, Jesus. What a mighty God. Thank you, Jesus. Then he had a time with Bathsheba. We all know that story. Yes. And David was walking in flesh like his sister Rachel. Yeah, he, he had lost sight. He had lost sight. He was at home while his men were on the battlefield. Uh -huh. Thank you. And he was home and he was looking over into something that didn't belong to him. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Lord. And he sent out and I'll tell you, I didn't know how bad the thing this was until I was studying this. You know, I know that he sent Uzziah out with a letter and said to put him into the heat of the battle. You guys all know the story. But I was reading about uh, when a letter went back that some of the other soldiers died. Some of the other men died. Uh, they said, you know, tell him that there were arrows that came from the wall. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Lord. And he was talking about collateral damage. He said, don't worry about it. Don't worry about it to these other men. There's always going to be death. Thank you, Jesus. So, you know, David at that point didn't care that Uzziah died. He didn't care that men, the sheep that he was supposed to be taken care of, had died and lost their lives so that, so that he could have the Sheba. He didn't care. He was in a bad place with God. He hadn't guarded his heart. Thank you, Jesus. He hadn't done what he was supposed to. Thank you, Lord. And there's a price to pay. Amen. But you know, Nathan came to him, and Nathan told him about a man that had taken another man's sheep. Yeah. Thank you, Jesus. And David became angry, didn't he? He became angry, and he said, you know, who is this man that has done this wicked thing? And and Nathan looked at him and he said, Thou art the man. Thou art the man. He said, Thou art the man. Thank you, Lord. But he knew enough about God. He knew enough about God that God was a forgiver. That God was the one that restored your soul. That in the valley, he said, He restored me. And he went before God and he repented before God. And God restored him. Yes. What a mighty God he is. Yes. So Amen. merciful. So merciful. Yes. You know, sometimes we forget and, you know, if we make a mistake or we sin, you know, that God is that restorer. He is yes. the one that forgets. Yes. And through David's walk, 
David had times that he was on the mountain and he had times when he was in the valley, but he learned that the valley is restoration. Thank you, Lord. And the valley is growth. You know, you don't grow too much on the mountain, but you grow a whole lot in the valley. Amen. Thank yeah. you, Jesus. Right. Thank you, Lord. But David always, thank you, Lord, had a heart of praise for God. Thank you, Jesus. <coughs> and through his lineage came Jesus. Amen. Thank yeah. you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. But you got to realize through the process of living for God that there is a process of sanctification, you know, that we are going through, a process of walking toward God, a process of perfection, you know, and there's a process of glorification. That's right. Thank you. There's a day coming. He looks so high Hallelujah. that we're going to stand before him without spot and blemish. Or any such thing. Thank you, Lord. He's going to say, Welcome home, my good and faithful. Just like Apostle Paul said, I followed the fight. Thank you. Didn't mean he didn't make mistakes. Didn't mean Apostle Paul or David didn't mistake, make mistakes because they knew it. Thank you, Lord. And we're going to make mistakes and we're going to fall and we're going to fail. But you know what? We have to have a heart to get up. We have to have a spirit that we guard our heart. Yes. And we guard our heart Amen. by, by you know, shutting the appearance of evil, by submitting yourself to God and resisting the devil. Yeah. He said he would flee from us. That's right. He would flee from us. That's Thank right. you, Jesus. You know, we can make it if we want to make it. Yes. He, God gave us everything, every all provision that we need to make it. Thank you, Lord. Hallelujah. Came to us in the Holy Ghost. Everything that we have, it's all packed up. It's all in there. Yes, thank you, Lord. So stir up the gift in you and yeah. guard your heart. Thank you, yeah, Jesus. Thank you, thank you Lord. Fault, for as much as he was faithful 
neither was there error or fault found in him. I'm thinking when I was reading this, and it's, I thought, I thought, when enemies can't find no fault in you, you must be perfect. It seems like people sometimes want to find fault and talk about you and all these things, even though you're trying your best. But I say, look up. <laughs> look up. Our redemption draw the time. Uh, there was no fault. They made uh, a scheme to entrap Daniel into his disfavor with the king, appealing to uh, Darius, the king, who made a law that would self-involve Daniel in law breaking. They knew Daniel prayed three times a day. So guess rightly that they made any law to stop him praying for 30 days would get him involved with breaking the command. This shows the boldness and the faith of Daniel. He was not unwise in any standpoint, for his religion and his in his God was in a was in a challenge. Verse, if you read uh, five to ten, he did not look toward the sun as the fire worshippers did, but towards Jerusalem, where the temple of Jehovah had stood, and where the sacred presence of the priest had spoken. This seemed to have been the custom among the Jews when they were away from the holy city. You'll find that uh, some of those scriptures are in Psalms 5 and 7. Daniel would not bow to the image of the king had set up to worship. The president of the kingdom, the governor, the prince, the council, the captains have consulted together to establish a royal statue made of gold standing nine feet tall to worship. They made a degree that whoever shall ask a petition of any god or man for 30 days, save thee, O king, shall be cast into the den of lions. Now, O king, establish the decree and sign the writing that it be not changed according to the law of the Meds and the Persians, which altered not King Darius. He signed the writing of the decree. Daniel went into his house, and his window men opened in his chamber towards the Jer Jerusalem. He knelt upon his knees three times a day. And he prayed, and he gave God thanks, as he always did. They found Daniel praying before his God. They made a decree if Daniel didn't bow, they would put him in the den of lions. The king commanded they brought Daniel, cast him into the den of, into the den of lions. Now the king spoke and said unto Daniel, Thy God whom thy servants contended, he will deliver thee. The king went to his palace, passed the night fasting and praying, no music was played. He didn't sleep any. But early the next morning, he went to the den of lions. And when he came to the den of lions, he cried with his voice unto Daniel. And the king spoke and said to Daniel, O Daniel, servant of the living God, yeah. is thy God whom thy servants continue able to deliver thee from yeah. the den of lions? Yeah. Then said Daniel unto the king, O king, live forever. My God, how I will shine thy yeah. My God has seen his angels and has shut the lion's mouth. Amen. They have not hurt me, for as much as before him, innocent was found in me. And also before the old king have I done no more hurt. Hallelujah. My God is a God of deliverance. Amen. Yes, he is. And I, I, I was reading about Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego. And if you read the book of Daniel, you'll find a lot of things that God did a lot of miracles throughout the word of God. You'll find out how God delivered them when they put them in. Uh, the, in the fiery furnace and how the smoke and the fire didn't even, didn't even singe their hair, didn't even burn the clothes, they didn't even smell the smoke my God is still a God of yeah. yes. my God has not changed Come on. Jesus in the book of Hebrews he says I am the same yesterday, today and forever and I change not he's still the same God brother, brother oh shine high son and holy he does a body brother Lord, I praise you. Hallelujah, Jesus. Brother Nelson, last night he preached a wonderful message. God has not changed. He's still the same God. Still the same God. And you know what he did for them? He'll do for us. When we get in our battles and our tribulations and our troubles and our distress of the life, Sister listen, he's always there. He's always there. Always there. Hallelujah. Sometimes we don't understand what we have to go through. But you know, I, I was uh, uh, reading, and I know all y'all probably know all about it. You read in the book of, I believe it's Exodus, where he brought the children out of uh, Israel and how they were wandering in the wilderness for 40 years. That was to prove them. Yeah. That was to show them the power and the mighty 
God that they yeah. had. And God wanted them to trust Him. Hallelujah. You know, that's what God wants us to do. He wants us to trust Him. Hallelujah. I, I was thinking uh, here a few months ago, maybe you might have been a year or so ago, but I had studied a, a message that we were, on a, I think it was in like a, a seminar they were having, and I had studied, and I had prayed, and I fasted, and I done everything I knew to do. And you know, it come time, it come time that I was to go to church. I had, I had to put all my notes up in my books, and I had to go. And as I got to the door, I said, Lord, I said, I've done everything I know to do. Yeah. And I put my door handle on the door handle, and opened the, open the door, and the Lord said, why don't you just trust me? Hey, why don't you just trust me? Yeah. Sometimes we worry ourselves by studying. And I know it's good to study, but you know the devil wants you to worry. And when you get up here, you get nervous, and sometimes you get tongue-tied, and he don't want you to say anything, but say it anyhow. Amen. Praise him anyhow. Yeah. Oh, hallelujah. God wants us to praise him. Yeah. He wants us to trust him. Not lean on to our arm of flesh, but lean on him. Amen. You think David would have been delivered if he just leaned on his own self? Uh -uh. No. Those lines would devour him. Amen. Yes, he would. Yeah. Oh, I told the king to live forever, king. Then there, the king wrote, <laughs> then the king Darius wrote to all the people and nations in language, in language that dwell on the earth. Peace be multiplied unto you. I make a decree that every dominion of my kingdom, men tremble in fear before the God of Daniel. Hallelujah. For he is the living God. Steadfast forever. His kingdom which shall not be destroyed. His kingdom, his dominion is forever. Even until the end. Yeah. He delivers and rescues. He works signs and wonders in heaven and in earth. Who can deliver Daniel from the power of the lions? Nobody but Jesus. Amen. Nobody but Jesus. And as I was telling you, Daniel was a, a, a man that interpreted dreams. And if you look with me in, uh, I think it's uh, the uh, fourth chapter here of Daniel. Uh, about this king that was Nebuchadnezzar. How he was high and mighty. And he had this dream. And he wanted them to send for the sorcerers and all those to come and, and interpret his dream. But they couldn't interpret it. But Daniel could. In the 19th verse, I might not be starting at the right verse here because I don't have it wrote down. The Lord just put this in my spirit when I come to church tonight about the interpretation. You know what? If we seek God, we can have the gifts of the Spirit. Yeah. We can have the gifts of the Spirit and yeah. interpretation, prophecy and all that. Yeah. Well, uh, we need to wade out into the deep. There's yeah. a deep calling to the deep. That's, that's in the scripture. Yeah. We need to call to the deep. Lord, help us to wade out, not just in ankle water, but wade out into the swimming water. Yeah. God, that we can have more and more and more. And we can have the discernment of spirits when people come among us that, that have the seducing spirits and doctrines and devils and try to see us and we'll know who's of God and who's not of yeah. God. Hallelujah. Amen. But Daniel, here he had died. Daniel says, Daniel, whose name was changed to Belshazzar, was astonished for one hour after the king had told him his dream. And he thought to trouble him. The king spake and said, Belshazzar, let not this dream or the interpretation thereof trouble thee. Belshazzar answered and said, My Lord, the dream for thee that thou hast, that the interpretation thereof be thy enemies. If you read the story, you'll find out the king, he, he was high and mighty, didn't give God praise. Daniel began to interpret the dream that he had. He said, The tree that thou sawest, which grew and was strong, whose height reached to the heavens, and the sight thereof of the earth, whose leaves were fair, and the fruit thereof much, and it was meat for all, under which the beast of the field dwelt, upon whose branches the fowls of the heavens and their habitation. It is thou, O king, thou art grown and become strong, for thy greatness is grown and it reaches into heaven. And thy dominion to the ends of the earth. And whereas the king saw a watcher and a holy one commanding down from heaven, saying, Hew the tree down, destroy it. He leaves the, the stump and the root thereof in the earth, 
even the bed of iron and brass, the tender grass of the field, and let it be wet with the dew of heaven, and let his portion be with the beast of the field, till seven times pass over. God is a God of he'll let you know. And you know what? You never get too high and mighty that he can't bring you down. Right. He tells us we humble ourselves. God will exalt us. Yeah. But if we exalt ourselves and think we were something when we're nothing, God will bring us down and let us know he's still the God. Amen. He's still God. He's still got everything in control. It says, this is the interpretation of Cain. This is the decree of God most high. Daniel has interpreted his dream. It says, which has come upon my Lord the King, that they shall drive thee from men, and thy dwelling shall be with the beast of the field. They shall make thee to eat grass as ox. They shall, and they shall wet thee with the dew of heaven. Seven times shall pass over, till thou know that the Most High ruleth in the kingdom of men and give him to whomsoever he will. Whereas they commanded to leave the stump of his tree roots, thy kingdom shall be sure to thee, for thou, for thou hast known that the heavens do rule. Wherefore, O king, let thy counsel be accepted unto thee. Break off thy sins by righteousness, and thy iniquities by showing mercy to the poor. It, it may be a lengthening of thy tranquility. All this time, all, all this came upon the king, Nebuchadnezzar. And the end of 12 months, for a whole year, just think about that, for his disobedience, what he had to go through. I tell you what, Sister Blitz already said, obedience is better than sacrifice. Yes. We can fast and we can pray about obedience and all that's good. But we better be obedient unto the word of God because that's what we will be judged out of. And you know, his wrath is going to fall one day. We talk about it, we preach about it, we read about it, we teach about it. But it's going to come, children. I don't know when, but it's going to come. And it's going to come to each and every one of us. So he pays us to be ready. It says, and it came to the king Knesset. Nebuchadnezzar. At the end of 12 months, he walked in the palace of the kingdom of Babylon. The king spake and he said, Is not this great Babylon that I have built? For the house of the kingdom by the might of my power and for the honor of my majesty. Always mine, mine. I, I did it. I did it. You know what? If God allowed you to have anything in this life, it wasn't all you that did it. It was God gave you strength to do it. It was God's grace and His mercy that He gave you strength to get out of work what you got. Yeah. And we should give God praise and thanks for what we had. Because if you look just as easy as if we got it, just as easy can be taken away. Amen. Fire can come and destroy. Yeah. Oh, yes. Floods can come and destroy me. But I want to give God praise. Hallelujah. Yeah. Don't want to be like King and everything. I did this and I did that in my power and my judgment. Yeah. While his word was still in his mouth, there fell a voice from heaven saying, O King Nebuchadnezzar, to thee he has spoken. Thy kingdom is departed from thee, and they shall drive thee from men. And thy dwelling shall be with the beast of the field. They shall make thee to eat grass like oxen. Seven times shall pass over thee until thou knowest that the Most High ruleth in the kingdom of men and liveth to give so ever he will. The same hour was, was the thing fulfilled upon Nebuchadnezzar. He was driven from men. He did eat grass as oxen. And his body was wet with the dew of heaven, till his hair, till his hairs were grown like eagles' feathers, and his nails like blood cost, bird cost. Yeah. That's for his disobedience. Yeah. That's for not giving God honor. That's for taking the honor that belonged to God. Yeah. Amen. Hallelujah, Jesus. Amen. It says at the end of the days, I Nebuchadnezzar lifted up my eyes into heaven. 
And my understanding returned unto me. You see, it looked to me like he was insane there for a while. For his disobedience. Come on. You know, people say that God don't put things upon people. Yes, he does. Yes, he does. I, I believe God sends pestilence, sickness, earthquakes, all those things that you yeah. read in the word of God. God did it. God did it. God's in control. Amen. 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 God's in control. Look at Dallas a few scriptures. You're right back. Yeah. God's a peasants. How God sent peasants upon, among, among the people for their yeah. disobedience. Amen. And you know what? God is still a God of wrath. Yeah. Even though he's a God, he's a judge, a, a God that will judge, he's still a God of wrath. Yeah. He's a God of mercy too. Yeah. Hallelujah. That's about what does it say in the book of James? Humble oh, thyself before thy God. Yeah. Humble ourselves. That's what God wants us to do, to be humble. Yeah. Stay humble before him. At the end of the day, he lifted up his eyes into heaven. His understanding returned unto him. And he said, I bless the most high. Yeah. I praise and I honor him that liveth forever and ever. Whose dominion is everlasting dominion. In his kingdom is from generation to generation to generation. Hallelujah. And I thank God for his word tonight. Yeah. I thank God that I know that God is able to deliver. Brother Nelson, if we stay up before God, yeah. and we see the face of God, we can see the signs and the wonders right. taking place among the church people today. Amen. I was thinking... It's Brother Spence, uh, we enjoyed his message so much when he was here a couple weeks ago. How he brought back our attention to the saints of old. How when you went into the church, I can remember them in the old church over there. We were lived in Ohio and we would come down here for church on the weekend. And this is the truth, so help me God. Before we even got into the church building, going up the steps, you could feel the power of the glory of God. And there was times that we would come down here and we would clean the church before church started. And you could hear the music and playing, and you could hear singing and going on. And when you got in the building, there wasn't nobody in there. Hallelujah. God was in the place and presence still was in the place. And sometimes when we come down here and we pray and we see God, God's presence is in this place. And I want to see the glory of God like it used to be. Yeah. Oh, hallelujah. Brother Larry, yeah. we would go to church and we could see the smoke. Oh, hallelujah. And Brother Nelson, they've been times that we've come down here to have church. I could hear the Holy Ghost coming down the river. So that the devil will shut the light. It seemed like it come out to the building. And next thing you know, brother, everybody in the building was shouting, praising God. We need to get back to the old man, yeah. God. We need to get back where we're praying.
you know, and the desire that I want to study. Yeah. You know, I thank him and I, I praise him. And God is greatly to be praised. Yes, and, and, you know, um, Brother J.R., I want to keep my mind upon God. Yes. And, you know, I want to have a mind to worship <laughs> and praise God. And, and, you know, I just want to read and, and know more about him. And I found this, that that the more I know about God, the more I know I need to be in the Word and how I'm humbled by it. You know, and uh, yeah. I'm humbled by God's Word. Amen. You know, I, I want to read some in the book of Genesis 37 and 5 about Joseph. You know, um, um, I, I was thinking about this, and, you know, God gave me some thoughts, and, and I've been thinking about it, and... Uh, trying to pray, and I said, God, I can't do nothing without you, you know, and I, I just want to honor God and uh, be in his will, and I want to start at verse 5, and Joseph dreamed a dream, and he told it his brother, and they hated him yet the more, and he said unto them, here I pray, you this dream, which I have dreamed. For behold, we have, we were binding sheaves in the field, and lo, my sheep arose and also stood upright. And behold, your sheep stood round about and made as a side to my sheep. And his brethren said to him, Shalt thou indeed resign over us, or shalt thou indeed have dominion over us? And they hated him yet the more for his dream, dreams and, and for his words. But you know, God had a plan, didn't he? Yeah. God had a plan. And you know, when God uh, instills a plan, you ain't going to change that. Right. You know, God is, he, his, what God has instilled for Brother Larry and Brother J.R., he's going to do it. I believe God will deliver. Amen. And you know, Joseph, he was about 17 years old uh, as I was studying this. And you know, uh, not everybody's going to be excited about your blessing. Amen. But what God has got for you, everybody's not going to be excited about it. But you know what? You just got to hold on. And, and we have heard a lot about holding on and just being faithful to God. Yeah. Just letting God be God and let God have his way. And I found that, that God's ways are so much higher than my ways. And he knows so much more. And, you know, he knows how to teach people and groom them and knock all these weights off that we can serve him. Yeah. I don't want no weights on me. Yeah. I just want to serve God. Yeah. And you know, uh, God has given me two dreams about uh, about ascending and just ascending into heaven. And you know, and I was just saying, Lord, I'm going to make it. I'm, I made it. I made it because I traveled so far. Uh, but I thank you for that. But God has a plan. Just like uh, like he did for Joseph here. In 37 and 18. And, uh, and when they saw him afar off, even before he came here to them, they conspired against him to slay him. And they said one to another, Behold, this dreamer cometh. Come now, therefore, and let us slay him and cast him into a pit. And we will say, some evil beast have devoured him, and we shall say, see what will become of his dreams. And, he's, and he told his father, uh, brother, another dream. And you know, uh, not everybody's going to like what God has given you. Amen. And you know, some people don't even want to believe it. But this is, a, this is proven to be that God does work in dreams. Amen. 
And you know, and that's what he had to hold on to. It was his dream. And verse 18 says, And when they saw him afar off, even before he came nigh to them, they conspired against him to slay him. And, and you know, one to another, uh, they wanted to, be, to see what was going to become of this dreamer. But you know, God had a plan. Yeah. And I believe God's plan was right on time. Yeah. You know? And uh, in verse 21 says, uh, Reuben uh, heard it and, and he delivered him out. And his brother was uh, uh, stripped Joseph of his coat. And, and he dipped it down in some kind of blood to make it look like some animal had killed him. Yeah. But you know, they, they lied to their father, didn't they? Uh -huh. About their brother. They, they uh, had jealousy in their heart. Yeah. And, and you know, jealousy, you know, is cruel as the grave. Yeah. And yeah. you know, you got to get that stuff out of there. Amen. You know, you can't be used by God when you've got all this Amen. stuff hanging Amen. on you. Amen. You know, oh. Joseph, he was... He, he was uh, uh, holding on to, the, to, his, to his dream, you know, and no doubt he was excited about his dream. I know I'm excited when God gives me one. So uh, I, I want to keep, you know, I just highlighted some scriptures here. And, uh, and they, they, they was going to sell him to a, uh, a Jew tonight and, and then there passed by uh, the Mennonites drew and lifted up Joseph. And, uh, and you know, uh, God already, he was working on me. He, he had a plan here. Yeah. And uh, I thank God for his plan. And, and his, uh, you know, his coat was torn. And, you know, they, they took it back to his father. And can you imagine how his father felt? Lord help him, I pray. I don't want no no bad blood in me. I want to I want to have the right thing, brother Larry, in me. Come on, I want to have my mind upon God. Yes. yes. And you know, and uh, you know the very thing that Joseph's brothers didn't want to do. You know, in, in verse uh, chapter forty-two, and verse six says, "And Joseph's brothers came and bowed down." You know, whether you want to or not, you're going to do it the way God says. Amen. If God says you're going to bow down, you're going to bow down. That's right. And, uh, and Joseph was thrown in, in, in prison, in the king's prison. And you know, when he interpreted the dream, he was about 30 years old. And the name Joseph means God shall add. You know, uh, I thank God for that. You know, yeah. you, he, you know, he he saved, he saved uh, those people. You know, they had seven years of good, and then it went straight into seven years of famine, didn't it? Mm -hmm. And you know, Joseph's brother came to, from Canaan, and uh, Joseph saved the Egyptians. Yeah. Yes. And Joseph's father and uh, Jacob, his uh, and his brother. He wanted to see his daddy, didn't he, again, and his little brother named Benjamin. But uh, uh, Joseph lived to be 110, I read today. But you know, from 17 to 110 is a long way. Yeah. But you know, God had a plan, and he brought Joseph through. You know, from the times he was thrown, thrown in, in jail and, and in prison, and uh, God brought him through. Yeah. And you know, he, he'll bring us through. Yeah, really. Whatever you're going to go through, he'll yeah. bring you through. Yeah. Yeah. I feel like sometimes I have a lot of uh, Joseph in me. I need God to bring me through. Yeah. But you know, there's time to everything. There's a time in a season that yeah. you're going to have to go through things. But it's to strengthen you. Yeah. It's yes. to bring you yes. through. Yeah. And it's, it, it's, it's to put the devil in his place. Yeah. You see why the devil's mad? Yeah. It's because God has a plan. Yeah. And he's to bring yeah. his people yeah. through. Yeah. You know, no matter if you are in prison, God will bring you through. He has a way of bringing you out. Yeah. I believe God will bring us out. we got to hold on. Yeah. And I don't want to hold on because I want to be saved. 
I pray. I say, God, don't leave me here. But whatever you're going to do, Lord, don't do it without me. I don't want God to do what he's going to do. Don't do it without me. Because I want to be in the center of God's will. And I want to be used by God. And Rachel sings that song sometimes. You know, God can only use a soldier that he can trust. Yeah. I want to be I want to be somebody that God can trust. Amen. Hey, I'm a, Lord, help me tonight, God. <laughs> I just want to be used by yeah. the Lord. Yes. Whatever it is, if it's the, the lowest job in the building, as long as I'm used by God. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. Come on, you know, in Romans 8 and 39, I, I, just, I, I read this today, and, you know, it was uh, from a, a, just another book, but... Uh, nor high nor death or any other creation shall be able to separate us from the love of God, which is in Christ Jesus, our Lord. You know, he is our Lord. He is our Lord. He is our God. And he will deliver us out. He will bring you through. And you know, he is my God. And that's why that he says here, that he is our Lord. He is our God. Amen. And his name is Jesus. And we got to go down in his name, Jesus. Yes. And when we come up, we'll come up, Brother J.R., as a new preacher. Yeah. You know, I, I want to be, I want to be whatever God would have me to be. Yes. You know, I have desires that I want God to meet. And I want to obey God. So Amen. you all pray for me that I'll continue on in the name of Jesus. Amen. Amen. Jamie, you got a testimony tonight? Oh, come on, say something good for Jesus. I'm grateful to be here tonight and thankful for everything he's done for me. Uh, Brother Larry was singing that song, and I thought about it throughout the service about hallelujah, it's already done. It's already it's done. Yeah. God's already done for us, but we let the enemy try to be yeah, able to do yeah. I know I've yeah. covered this a lot lately, but whenever God says something, he means it. That's right. Yeah. So when the enemy will try to come in and steal what he's given yeah. us, yeah. because he's using the mind games with us. Yeah. Yeah. The Bible says the weapons of our warfare are not carnal, yeah. right. but they're mighty for yeah. God's yeah. they're going down a stronghold. Yeah. And that we got to cast down every imagination, yeah. every imagination, so when the enemy starts putting these lies in our mind, we got to cast them down. Yeah, yeah. Cast them down every imagination and every high thing that exalts itself against the knowledge yeah. of God. Yeah. And bring it into captivity, yeah. every thought to the obedience yeah. of Christ. Yeah. Because that's where the enemy tries to steal it. Yeah. He'll get into our mind and try to tell us things yeah. that isn't true. Yeah. The Bible says, yeah. who changed the word of God, the truth of God's word, into a lie? Yeah. And that's why he'll try to do it. He'll play mind games with you. Yeah. And he'll try to take everything that God's yes. given you and change it into a lie. Yeah. So if you believe God's healed you, he'll tell you he has not. Yeah. If you believe God's going to provide yeah. for you, he'll tell you he won't. Yeah. But the word said that God's not a man that he lied. Yeah. He, his promises are true. Yeah. And yeah. he can take it to the bank, Sister Rachel. Yeah. I'm yeah. thankful tonight that I'm serving a God that don't change. And what he did back then, he'll do today. Yeah. I love him and I thank him for all he's done. Yeah. 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 Amen. Yes. So all we've got to do is if we learn, and I said, it's the, 
A lot of it is in trust. Amen. Yes. We got to trust God with our whole life in everything that we do. And sometimes we may not understand not only what's going on, why we uh, do this or why we do that, why a change comes, Lord. But we've got to trust Him in everything that we do in our life because He is a, a great God. Amen. He's the one that we look to, the author and the finisher of our faith. Amen. Yeah. When we begin to look to Him. Instead of what our ways is or what our mindset may be. When we start looking to Jesus, the author, the finisher of our faith, and start trusting him, amen. Because if we uh, try to go a different route or a different way, do we understand that we're serving a God that has already got everything planned out for our life, amen. He's already uh, wrote everything of our life. I was thinking as Brother James was talking about Joseph, amen. Lord God, he had those dreams and, and those things and his family didn't even want to look because of a, him being a child or young. But I'm going to tell you, if we're waiting upon the Lord, the Bible says if we're waiting upon the Lord, amen, he'll renew our strength. And we can mount up with wings of eagles, amen. Uh, I'm glad that I'm just going to wait upon the Lord, amen. What he speaks to us, what he says to us, Brother Dallas, he is able to perform. He will bring it to pass, amen. When God says it, or his word says it, it's going to happen. It don't matter what man or what weapons come against us. Yeah. The Bible says when the spirit, I'm talking about when the enemy comes in like a flood, the spirit of the Lord. If we got the spirit of the Lord, amen. Yeah. So all we got to do is trust him and the spirit of the Lord will lift up a standard against him, amen. And I believe if we trust God with everything that's going on in our lives. Yeah. We won't have a problem, amen. But so many times we want to do it on our own. I really want I've got to do it this way. But I don't want to do it my way. Lord God, I want to get me out of the way and I want to get in his way. Yeah. Amen. Yeah. If you could just understand and hear why I feel in the spirit, amen. I want to get me out of the way, but get in the way of Jesus, yeah. amen. And get right where he wants me to be, Brother Dallas, and say, Lord, I'm going to trust you. Lord, I'm going to walk in your ways. I'm going to keep your commandments. I'm going to do what you want me to do. It don't matter if I don't have no friends. Glory to God. I'm talking about I'm going to follow Jesus all the way to the end. And the I'm going to tell you, we're serving a God that's able. Amen. He's able to take us all the way home. He said he'll never leave us. He'll never forsake us. But he'll go all the way with us. Hallelujah. Yes. But not that's been the problem over the years. We'll get so far with the Dallas uh, and we we'll just lean upon something else. Uh, but I don't want to lean to my own understanding. Uh, I'm going to lean to Jesus. Yeah. Hallelujah. I'm going to lean to the higher power. Hallelujah. Who is the higher power? Uh, his name is Jesus. Uh, all power uh, was given unto him both in heaven uh, and in earth. Amen. Uh, so if we'll trust him uh, with our lives uh, and walk where Jesus says to walk, uh, and go when he says to go. When he says don't go this way, we don't go, Pastor Nelson. But when he says follow me, I want to follow him in everything that he tells me to do. My mind down through the years, sometimes I don't understand why God, glory to God, why God, do I got to do it this way? But God is what his people will got to do what he says to do. God, the God that loves us, the God that's going to take us all the way home, the God that gave us the Holy Ghost, the God that dwells on the inside, that says, I love you, and if you love us enough to leave, to put the Holy Ghost on the inside, so all we got to do is trust Jesus, because he's got all power in heaven and in earth, and if we trust him, the God he'll do like he did for Joseph, uh, he'll do for us. Uh, just like he did for Moses, uh, he'll do for us. Uh, just like he did for David, uh, he'll do for us. Uh,
Sometimes I'm going to tell you something. Pride will try to get the best of me. But we got to hold on to Jesus with everything that's going on in our life. Just like the Bible says, be instant in season, out of season. Hallelujah. When you say, well, it wasn't my night. Your God, your night's every night. If you come, calls upon you, glory to God, I feel the Holy Ghost in place. Sister Rachel, when he calls upon us, it's time for us to step out and say, I'll trust you, Lord. I'll trust you, Jesus. Whatever you want me to do, I'm going to trust you. He's awesome. I know I say it a lot. Words cannot describe who Jesus is to me. I'm talking about he's all wonderful. We sang those songs. He's wonderful. He's counselor. He's mighty God. He's everlasting father. He's the prince of peace. But his name is Jesus. Everything goes back to that name that is above every name. Every name. If we're trusting. Every sickness. Think about this. Every sickness has not to bow. Yeah. That's right. Man. But you know what lies at? It goes back to us being obedient and trusting Him. Right. Because He already, that song just like when it's already done, He already done it. When He hung His head and said, It's finished. Yeah. Into thy hands I commit my spirit. Amen. Well, it was finished on, I'm talking about on the top of North Office Mountain. When Jesus was there, I'm talking about when, the, when it was rent from the top to the bottom, that uh, it opened access uh, that men knew, Lord God. Uh, I'm talking about it opened access uh, that I could get to Jesus. Uh, I don't have to go to some priest, uh, but I could get on my knees uh, and say, Lord, I'm trusting you. I'm coming to you. Brother James, just keep on holding on. Uh, God's going to lift you up. Uh, God's going to raise you up. Uh,